Hi everybody, welcome back to Painted. It is Fun with Foils Friday. So we have got a whole bunch of foil products and projects uh, that I'm working with right uh, today. Um, and I'm a little tired, so don't be surprised if I stumble around a little bit. Um, my friends all know. Hi Rima, nice to see you here. Um, those who you know me personally know that we're also in the process of moving our home and the big move day is Monday. So every day I've been here in the studio, then every night I've been over at the new house, painting, organizing, doing all kinds of stuff. Hi Sarah, nice to see you. Um, so the next thing I've got to go make sure I can get myself on my live on my iPad and then we're going to share some fun information. Let's see, here we go. Um, I should probably turn my volume down too so that we're not listening to me echo myself. There's that. And I can see myself now. Okay, great. Thank you for your patience. Hi, Sheila. Nice to see you too. Um, okay, all the good stuff is, uh, if you all saw the announcement earlier this week, um, in agreement with Foafex and our local distributor here, I am carrying a limited line of faux effects products. I will be carrying a small number of set coat colors, um, varnish plus in various sheens, uh, some small amounts of Venetian gem, and I am carrying old world finishing paint. Now, all those products that I mentioned, the of the all of those, the only one I'm able to ship to anybody is the old world finishing paint, but we're gonna do some fun lives with those next week so you get some, a little more experience with them. Hey, Gina, nice to see you. Hi, Tracy. So um, it's pretty exciting for me to be able to carry and sell some products. Um, any of the other go-to products for faux effects, I, I suggest you find your nearest faux effects uh, vendor who can sell it to, uh, send it to you. I am not in a position, uh, my agreement with Full Effects is I don't ship it, I'm a sub distributor. So uh, just the old world finishing paint that I can ship. So we're going to move on to more fun things. Um, as you know, the S word, you might have heard me mention it last one, um, is one of those words that uh, Facebook is not liking anymore. So I can't ask you to do certain things with the videos, but I can say instead of the S word, sorry, some flew by me, um, please hit your distribute button. Um, meaning um, post this video where in any other group or any other page that you'd like. So please S word the video and uh, I'm gonna move on to our project. So we're gonna aim down and, oh, it's okay to say the word again. Great, that's good to know. But you know what, I'm not saying it today. I'm, I'm having a fun time trying to figure out how to say other things. All right, so I have my um, live set up here on my, on my iPad so that I can see what's going on. Of course, it's not going, ah, it wants to be stubborn. Sometimes I just don't know what's going on, but that's nothing new and I can actually read the comments from here. So we're gonna work on some lampshades today. Hi, Maddie, nice to see you. Um, we're gonna work on a bunch of lampshades. We're gonna work on a little table and we're going to, I'm gonna show you what I'm going to do with a big church bench that I have to thank Jody Mullaney for, so I can't bend this up this way. Thank you, Jody, for finding that bench for me. All right, so here, first we're doing this. Now, this is, I honestly, the projects we're working on today are for my home. Um, so this is a little um, lampshade, clip-on lampshade for a bulb. You've seen these before, everybody's seen these. Um, I happen to have a sconce in the house that we're moving into that doesn't have lampshade. I don't like staring at bare bulbs. So we're gonna play with this. Now, normally I would use a fabric size on fabric, but I'm not pressing, I can't iron this lampshade. So I actually have to foil it in a, with regular foil size. And we're gonna see if this worked, because I only put one coat on. And it might actually need two because it might have absorbed in. Um, since I don't have to worry about washing it, it's not really gonna be an issue. So we're gonna use the Abigail foil on that. Let me see if I can 
stretch this arm over just a little bit. So you're kind of seeing what I'm doing and I'm not reaching in strange places. And yes, again, in my big old studio, I have completely surrounded myself with my stuff. Um, with two lampshades here and here and one right in the middle. I've only made it as tight as possible um, space for myself, mostly just so I don't have to reach very far. <laughs> All right, so I've painted this with our um, Artsyville foil size. Uh, I rolled on a good, generous coat. Like I said, this is, you can see it up close. It's one of the standard canvas stuff that they use on inexpensive lampshades. We're gonna see how this takes. So, I got my Abigail foil. I love this, I love this foil. It would be so cute on here. First, I'm rubbing it on with my hand. And yeah, I know I don't have a piece that covers the whole thing. I'm not worried about that. And then I'm gonna take um, one of these scrub brushes because it's a little stiffer. And I think the stiffness might help me a little bit on the fabric. I'm gonna see how well this takes. It's either gonna be great or it's gonna be a disaster. You're learning with me. And again, normally on something like this fabric, I would use uh, a fabric adhesive. A fabric size, our fabric uh, foil size, although, but, ha sorry, I'm stuttering, gosh. Our fabric adhesive, foil adhesive, has to be ironed on. And obviously, I can't really iron a lampshade, especially an inexpensive one like this, because it's lined in plastic. It would just melt the sucker. All right, a little bit of release there. Not terribly impressive. And you know what? It was an experiment. So I'm going to foil the rest of this all over again. And then maybe I'll put another coat on it tomorrow and see how it looks. Maybe I'll just clean up the edges and pre pretend this is what I wanted. Who knows? Yeah, see, I'm not getting... I'm not getting really great release on this. And I, I knew that was a chance. I figured I'd show it to you, um, see what happens. You know, foil adhesive, our Artsyville foil adhesive that you can get at paintedstudio.com is a terrific product, but the fabric is porous and it's soaked in. And that's okay, like I said. I can just put on another coat and see how that goes, which I will do later after this. So, yeah, it wasn't great on this fabric. I knew that could be the case. I'm okay with that. I'll take another step, and heck, if it really goes wrong, I'll just paint the sucker. So, the next one we're gonna work on, ooh, I've got a wobbly thing that's holding onto my phone, so it's gonna wiggle a little bit. Uh, let me push it up there. Next thing we're gonna work on, let me see if I can pull back a little bit, is this very large lampshade. Um, I have two of these. My dear friend, Kathleen Nye, yes, Kathleen, I'm talking about you, moved down to Florida and she had a couple of lamps and I, loved, I, I didn't really need them, but she insisted I needed to take them and then I go into, moved into a house that I didn't realize didn't have an overhead light on it. So, it's okay. Uh, would be pretty on a black shade. Yes, Cindy, it would be. And thanks, Gina. Listen, I'm experimenting with stuff. I'm, you know, I'm willing to take the hit and have something fail. Um, so you guys don't have to. So the first thing I'm going to do with this lampshade, I have foiled the whole thing. Uh, foil adhesive, our Artsyville foil adhesive is coated on here 100%. I should have much better release on here because this part is the only fabric part, and if it doesn't take well, well, what the heck, I'll just paint the line around it and tidy it up. So we have our spotted champagne, which I love this. Love it, love it, love it. It's a pretty foil. You wouldn't, weren't able to get it for a while. So I'm very happy that it's able to be gotten again. And what I'm going to do, and let me back up a little bit so that you can see me better. I'm gonna take it, and I'm gonna rub a little here and pull some off. And I think I just need a scrubber here. 
and you can see it's grabbing. But I don't want 100% release because I am going to use a matte silver on the background. Oh yeah, it's, so you can see it's leaving a nice tear away. Oh, and so there's, there it is on there irregularly. And then we're gonna just do the whole thing like that. I am absolutely on purpose. I need to adjust my camera a little bit. Hang on a second, everybody. <sighs> Maybe that'll make it a little easier. For some reason, I can't get seem to get this quite high enough. Let me see if I got something I can stick it on. I want you, I really want you guys to be able to see better. And I've been. I used to have this mounted a little higher in my old studio. Uh, and I think maybe that'll help a little bit. And then push it back. And I know you're seeing all kinds of crazy stuff as I move cameras around, but I wanna make sure you see it better. Okay, so we're back. You can see that I've released foil randomly. I got a little more to do all over the place. See, it leaves just a nice bit of gold trace behind. And it's going to take more than the foil that I happen to have here to get this one done. Okay. Let's see, where do I got to go next? Now I've released so much of this foil, I'm going to scrub more of it on. And you see the foil size here. When it's on the right surface, the foil size is just takes so little to release. I mean, really, I'm not doing a whole lot here. And the idea is that this finish will be imperfect. Um, even if the silver doesn't release because I'm playing with a lampshade and it's a hard surface to work on. Uh, how much does a roll of foil usually run? It depends on the foil. Uh, and because um, I sell the foil as a general rule, I sell it by the foot, but it's, uh, I can purchase it in a roll so we can, I can have orders set up for 25 foot rolls, um, 100 foot rolls, uh, with the exception of a few, a few of the very specialty foils. These foils are 400 feet by 100 foot. Uh, but I'm sorry, 400 feet by one foot wide. And these run around $260 for the whole roll. There is no cutting it down. So if you want less than that, you need to get on my website at paintedstudio.com and order by the foot. When it says quantity, quantity means one square foot. So you order the number of feet you want. I roll it onto a core for you and send it to you. I'm gonna need a little more of this foil. <laughs> yes, usually you don't need that much, Sheila. That's why I'm saying you order by the foot. Um, most people order anywhere between a foot and 25 feet, because that's usually enough to take care of a furniture project. Um, I only suggest ordering the larger rolls um, if you're doing a wall. Quite frankly, it's just a lot of it's a lot of product to have otherwise, or if you're like me, you're, you're selling it, which you won't be buying it for me if you're gonna resell it somewhere else. That would be silly. That would be expensive. All right, so I'm just kind of messing with this here. And you can see, again, I'm getting this really nice broken irregular. What's this lampshade material? Um, it's some sort of laminate over a, like a thin plastic. You know, it was made to look like faux leather, and it's not, I guarantee you. It doesn't even look like that much like leather. It just sort of has this funky, crackled paper look. So I'm just putting some on here. A little more gold, and some of these spots I got it, I was a little light-handed with it. <laughs> 400 feet? <laughs> yes. Now, 400 feet is only if you want to buy the whole roll. 
Um, if you want smaller amounts, you just order it by the foot from me. I'll sell you as many feet as you like. I'll make sure you get it. All right, I think, let me take a look and see if I've got most places. Right in here, I missed a lot. I know you can't all see all of the spots here because I'm rolling this so I can catch it in the light. So I've gotten, you know, the release is good. I'm not going for perfect, although I want to see how it grabs on this band. So I'm going to play with that for a second. Yeah, like I thought, it might not grab on the fabric well, and I'm okay with that. I knew that going in. Now the other thing I'm going to do is then I'm gonna take this gorgeous matte silver for the background here. I really want to keep the contrast between the high metals and the matte texture there. I like that combination. I'm gonna take this here. I'm going to take, tack it right to it. Let's see if I can get a little, out a little flatter. You can already see it's starting to grab. And again, even if I don't get really 100% perfect coverage, that's okay. Because I'm, I, my intention is to make the background a part of the final look. Remember, foils are a very thin film, so you're never going to get 100% flawless, opaque coverage. It is releasing nicely, though. Get in here. Um, by the way, lampshades are awkward as heck to do. They really are because they're they're not terribly stable. Oh, thank you for the love of my nails. Yes, my neon orange nails. I'm prepping for spring. All right, look how cool that came out. Matte silver with the gold. Um, spotted champagne foil in the background. Ah, oh, I love it. I'm so, oh, that's gonna look so great. Okay, need a little more foil, obviously, because I'm gonna finish lampshades today. And we're gonna do a, a couple of different things, so don't worry, you're not, if you're bored with lampshades, come back in 10 minutes, I'll be working on something else. So, let's get the rest of this on. These are whoppers of lampshades, they're huge. Well, no, they're not really that huge. They just feel big when I'm trying to foil them. <laughs> All right, let's be honest. They're big because they're a lot of work. <laughs> oh, God, you think I'd crack myself up because I don't know if I'm cracking any of you up, but I sure make myself laugh. All right. Scrubby, scrubby, scrubby. Um, And this is... um. A scrubber I got on Amazon. Oh yeah, that's giving me nice relief. But I have to watch it because you can see it gives scrub marks. So I have to, because it's a stiffer scrub brush than some of the other ones I have, which helps me on weird surfaces like this one. But I gotta remember to scrub up and down back. That, that corner <laughs> of the lampshade is going against the wall. Let me put it to you that way. That's coming out really nicely. Um, I'm going to change the angle here so I can get at it a little bit. And then um, I'm sort of looking at your questions as we go. Yeah. See this imperfect. I try to plan my finishes to be flawed. Why? Because otherwise I'll be crazy trying to get perfect. I don't like perfect. Perfect is um, machine cut. Am I shaking the table? Is it jiggling? <laughs> um, yes. Let me see what, what you're asking me. Um, could you use foils to do words? Um, yes, as long as you're not doing it on glass. Um, it doesn't work that way. You, the reverse gilding, you need, first of all, you need real gold, and second of all, the foil releases on the wrong side for you to do it on the back of glass. But yes, you can do this with words. I've done lots of stuff with it. Um, 
it's not the same as gold leaf, so don't try. I don't look at it as a substitute for gold leaf. I look at it as um, an alternative because the look's gonna be very different. <laughs> I'm not sure what's, Cindy, I gotta like not, I, got, I can't read while I'm doing work sometimes because I have no idea what you mean by jiggle, jiggle, shake, shake, shake. I gotta scroll back a second and read the comments, but I kinda wanna get the lampshade done. Okay. Oh, there we go, nice release there. little spot right down here that I need to get the get out with the brush now honestly I could have painted these and gone on with something else no problem I could have changed this completely gone with bright colors um, honestly I'm being a little lazy I know it but I also know what colors are in my home because these are for me so um, it makes sense to use what was already there as my base. But I really did, I spent a lot of time going, okay, the lamps are, themselves are brass, so what am I going to do with them to make them less metallic beige? Okay, you all are making fun of me and the jiggling. I don't know, I don't know whether you're picking on me because my boobs are jiggling. I don't know if you're picking on me. I can't help it, it's how I'm built. And of course the camera's aimed right at my chest right now, so that doesn't help either. So if y'all are picking on my boobs, bite me, <laughs> as my sister used to say. <laughs> Fortunately, I have a good sense of humor too, so I'm not easily offended. I personally find myself hysterical because I'm a dork. And you see, I'm cutting little pieces of foil because when you're working on an awkward shape like this, oh, you're talking about the table. You're not making fun of me. That's okay. I make fun of me all the time. I'm totally not offended, but you're, I'm jiggling the table. Oh, well, I can't help it. I'm, I'm a, sorry, my rings were twisting. Um, I'm kind of a goofball. And those of you who know me personally, no, I'm the first person to pick on myself. At least I entertain myself. I talk to myself a lot, too. I'm sure all of you do. But I got to have full-blown conversations. Now, this came out great. So you can see the undercolors and the matte silver with the champagne gold picking up highlights. And that came out really nice. And I, as you can see up here, the foil didn't take great here. So I am trying to decide if I'm gonna go back and try to foil it a little harder. I can do that with my fingernails and make that part of the look or if I just should paint this all over. So, you guys are all just cracking me up. Um, so, uh, let me know what you think. Should I be painting this? Um, to, what color do you think I should paint it or should I just leave it this kind of cool fractured look here? I'm gonna let you, uh, Oh gosh, he'll, yes, I was molesting my eggs the last one. Yes, oh my gosh, you guys are cracking me up. So, put some ideas up here. Let me, give me some ideas what you think about this. What, should I paint it? Should I leave it coarsely foiled and embrace that? Or let me know what you think. All right, we are moving on to our next very similar lampshade. Why? Because there are two of them. Two lamps, two lampshades. We are going in a completely different direction with that now. And we're gonna go for color because I have a lot of blues and plums and um, grays and greens in my home. Okay, uh, cool fracture. Some say leave it, some say paint. I will make the final decision after this and the majority of um, what you all say is what's gonna go. And if you share, 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 somebody else can kick in because I'm not waiting, but I'm not waiting long. I gotta get these done soon. All right, so I have blue foil, this gorgeous 
rich blue foil. And I'm gonna take it ugly side out and do this. And look how much foil that's taking. That's, that's releasing really well and really easily on this surface. I, you guys are cracking me up. It's my call. I'm asking you to make a call. One, one decision I don't have to make. Somebody else make it for me. And let's see. Yeah, got a little more over this one. I will have just enough foil on this piece to completely get this whole lampshade the way I wanted it with it. It's kind of funny, the pouncing patterns I created by wadding it up almost look like roses. Almost. Not quite. I'm not that delusional. I've got a lot of blue on this. And this one I have a feeling I'm definitely going to have to... Um, paint those edges no matter what because the brown edges are just not going to work on this one. All right, so I used up that whole thing. You can take a look at how much took off of there. Uh, the thinner the film, the better the release. Yeah, on, on most things you're right. The fabric wasn't great. Um, So let's go to the next one color. And what? I'm going Peridot Green. Yes, that's another color that I carry that I sell. So if you like this color, just go on over to Painted Studio and you can order some. I'm going to trim off. I happen to have like a little random piece that I had from doing another project, which is good because I don't want a ton of this color. Um, and good thing you can't see... I'm like, right over to my left over here is like the foil graveyard. There is just crap everywhere. Ooh, and there's a little piece of foil that stuck to the lampshade. I gotta peel off. There we go. You don't want little pieces sticking to things. It does bad things. Oh, I'm giving you all ideas. Good, that's what I'm here for. All right, so I'm gonna Pounce in some of this Peridot Green. I don't want anywhere near as much of it as I have the blue because I don't have that much green. I just think it would be a nice, I, on this piece, I want it as a nice offset. Um, and I, if you notice, some people, when they do their stuff, they'll paint this area here first, the fabric, and then tape it off. I'm not going to do that. That's too much work. I'd rather clean it, you know, paint the, the, thing afterwards that makes more sense to me. And of course, these lamp sh shades will need a top coat on it. You know, you use AquaGuard, you can use Varnish Plus. I'm gonna use whatever I have that's the thinnest coating I can leave behind because I don't want a whole lot of weight on this lamp shade either. Okay, I think I got... Turn it around again. Kathleen, if you tune in and watch this and you don't like what I'm doing to the lampshades, too bad. You made Ray put them in my car. <laughs> All right, so there's that. Now I can go with the matte silver again, but we're also going to do a couple other. We're going to add a little gold, I think, to it. Why? Because I can. Because I can. So I'm going to untape that roll. I always stick the tape on the back of my hand so I can try to remember to tape the roll back up, but, you know, I don't always remember until I'm standing right in front of the, the rolls that I have for display. So I just took a little tiny piece. All right, I get the tape off my hand after I babbled about it. You'd think I might remember it. All right, so here we go with this. And again... sprinkles of it all over the surface.
And the gold may not be that easy to see because the surface is already kind of beige. Now, my original thought was I was going to put this over it, but I think that texture is too much with all that I already have. So give me just a second. Let me go grab my roll of silver. take long. Roll of silver right there. It's just not within my reach. I had to go grab it. Hi, Addie. Nice to see you. So I'm going to take a bit of this. Um, I finally got smart and get, got myself some new scissors because I have scissors in my studio that are literally decades old <laughs> and they don't cut much of anything anymore because I've been using them to pry open cans and do all sorts of other things that, you know, scissors aren't really made for. So here we go with the silver completely over the surface. I'm not obviously not worrying too much if um, I don't get the lay down perfect because the texture is already under there. So here we go see how and I'm using this scrub brush it's a softer scrub it's way softer than the other one so I just want to see how that release works you know what I like the other scrub brush it's a little stiffer yep I'm gonna make the table jiggle again I'm sure I'm trying to lift it off so not doing that any reason that weird rubbing way uh, it's just really um, awkward to foil on a lampshade so oops. oh wow look at that oh I love that that's so cool and I still have some of the underneath color popping here and there that is not a problem of course if I wanted to I could glitter it too I probably I'm not, I'm not so sure how much my husband would like a glittered lampshade. That, that might not float his boat in the living room, but, you know, he knew me when he married me. God bless Chip. He lets me get away with so much crazy experiments on furniture and colors. And our last living room was painted a gray plum. And he didn't think he'd like it. And all of a sudden, it's like, you know really like this and I can see it because you know purple living rooms can be um, a tad intimidating but you know what it came out just right all right let's see This is always the challenge spot, that seam. I, Leslie, you are actually saying no glitter? Oh my God. You're like the glitter queen like I am. For Leslie to say no glitter, I'm kind of stunned. Now, obviously, when I get the lamps in my home and put them on a table, I will be happy to share. Oh my gosh, look how cool that came out. Oh, I love, love, love. Did I see a, one skip spot right there? I think I see a miss spot. Yeah, I know, looking at this mess, how would I know if I missed a spot? Let's go back in here, see if there's a little skinny spot in there. Yeah, I, this is what nails are for, too. This is what, more than anything, why I get a manicure, so I can use my nails as a tool. And 
And what I'm doing is getting right down to the seam so that there's no um, unfinished sort of halo at the bop bottom and top. Well, there's the skip spot. Maybe I missed it with foil adhesive, which is possible because I was rolling out a million things with foil adhesive today. Oh yeah, wow, I love this. So what I'm probably gonna do is either paint this gold to match the brass of the lamp, or I'm going to do a flat blue on it to pick up all the blue that's in the shade. So I am, I am thrilled, thrilled with this one. I'm actually very happy with both of them. So I'm setting them over to the side. And then I'm gonna adjust my camera angle here so you can see the table. Now, if you all remember a couple, about a week ago, um, you would think we could write them off of our taxes, our fingernails, oh yeah, I tried. And Gina Wolfram also, um, and I had a long conversation at an open house one day about why can't we write off our fingernails as tools. I keep thinking they're also health things so that I don't have to, you know, have my fingernails broken and bleeding. So this we did with, uh, let me adjust the camera just a little so you can see a little better. Uh, there you go. This table I did with the pink foil legs, the tie-dye pink foil legs a couple weeks ago. And then I did tinted Artsyville um, texture medium, which I carry um, with some orange pigment to, to bring it into line with the other colors that I was doing on it. And then I sat and said, well, what the hell am I doing with the top? Um, and that became an issue because it could, was like, it could go really, really pink and then that could be great or it could be obnoxious. And I've kind of got over to having it too pink and too orange. So we're doing the rose foil on here and it is literally almost exactly as wide as the table. So I did the um, Artsyville texture medium that I tinted orange and then I ran the, the leafy roller through it, which I carry. And now I put our Artsyville foil adhesive on it and I'm releasing it. And this is going to be, again, a very imperfect release between the texture of the texture medium and the fact that I have a pattern imprinted in here. It has nothing to do with the foil adhesive. It has nothing to do with the foil. It has everything to do with the fact that this has got a slightly um, porous texture to it. So I gotta go lift my piece of foil up. But, ooh, uh, oh yeah, that released beautifully. Now, took almost all the adhesive, uh, all the foil off except for where the leaves were. So this is so cool. And I got, obviously I need a little more because you know, I didn't cover the whole surface. Um, I'm not going back with this piece because it's too used right now for me to get a solid release from it. So I gotta go back. And I'm gonna go, and I did do the sides of the table too with the adhesive. So the sides are gonna have a much more complete release than the top because the sides don't have the porous texture on top and it doesn't have the leaf pattern stamped into it. So we're gonna do this. I wanna try something here too. Cause sometimes I think I got these scrub brushes and they're awfully soft. So I like a stiffer scrub brush on a coarse surface. Well, just times that a stiffer brush is better. I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of jokes in there. Okay, so let me get to the side here. Now the other thing though is you can over scrub and you kind of can mat the surface down a little bit. Oh yeah, that's good. So now I need to go over here, release on this, pull maybe that little piece that's sticking in the corner out. Right there. And there we go. Oh yeah, 
that's working just fine. And again, like I said, I gotta be paying attention to the foil as I lay it because this is re taking off a lot, which is exactly what I want to have happen, but it's still leaving some. So it looks like there's more foil um, on the film than there actually is. Okay. So some pieces take more foil, some pieces take less. It is what it is. I save all these things, and when I've gotten the, as much use out of it as I can, I use, turn them into packing material. So, you know, when you order from me, don't be surprised if you find some used foil in there. I make as I try to use these things as much and as in every way I can think of so that it's not wasted and ending up in garbage when it could be useful. Good. I'm going to lift this up so you can see me do the, the bottom half of it too because the whole thing, there's a lower level down here and that has no texture on it. So it will release very smooth. It'll be interesting to get the camera angle there, but we'll give it a shot. That's what I wanted to have. See, I'm getting a little more foil right in here, um, which is what I wanted. I want a little more into the leafy pattern. I want that orange to be a little more subtle because, you know, subtlety is such my middle name. Okay. As you can see, I don't, I'm not, I'm not sweating it too much. Um, that things are irregular and uneven. I actually, I love that look. Um, quite frankly, handmade has irregularity built in. If you wanted perfection, you get machine made um, because then it's programmed in and you get exactly the same thing in exactly the same way every time it's tooled. Um, handmade should have flaws in it because that's part of the beauty of it. I want, uh, let me see where I want a little more. I want a little more in there. And I need, I can see that I'm missing some over here. This corner does not want to take it. Did I miss it? No, I'm just not getting in there enough. There we go. Look how cool that is. That is great. And then if I lift it up, you're gonna see there's a lot of orange showing still. And then I got this, let's see if I can get it down. So you, I got the sides here. I missed this side, so I still have to do that well. Before I forget, because if I forget it and walk away, somebody will walk in with, I don't know, furry clothes on or something and then leave a really <laughs> bad, re that's silver, that's not, like I said, it's the foil graveyard over here. Somebody will walk in with something fuzzy on or fluffy and they'll stick to the table. Um, once again, if I haven't, you haven't heard me say it before, foil, this, our foil size, our Seagull foil size does not ever completely dry hard. So it'll always, it'll stay sticky forever. So once you're done, you absolutely have to put a top coat on it. There's, there's no escaping that. Um, my go-to top coat for furniture is Varnish Plus, Fofex product, alcohol resistant, which is very important on furniture because all, almost every cleaner and uh, every, um, obviously alcohol, but alcohol's in a lot of stuff, but ev almost every cleaning product has alcohol in it and that will, easily dissolve your finish if you don't have an alcohol resistant top coat. All right, so I'm putting that here. 
and then I'm gonna angle the camera down so you can see a little better. Um, all right, so you can see this is the table area in here that I haven't foiled. There's no texture on it, but there is foil adhesive on it. All right, I'm a genius. What did I do with my roll of foil? Oh, it's under the table. That's why I couldn't find it, it's under the table. All right, let's get another piece of foil cut. I know you can't really see me because the angle of the camera is tucked up under the table, so that doesn't give me much of um, a wide view. But I did just manage to drop the foil on the floor, so. And just in case you're wondering, I foiled, I sized and foiled the legs separately before I did the top and the shelf because I didn't want to have um, the wrong colors hitting the wrong places. And this is a little awkward here. So I gotta get it worked in a little bit, lay it out, see if I can smooth it a little bit. Got that on in there. Now this is, it's already releasing like with just my fingers. I don't think you can see that from there, but let me roll it back. You can see it's already, it's the release is so good, it's already releasing with my fingers. Um, how much is my foil size compared to Wanda size? Um, I, I don't know, because I don't know how much Wanda size is. But I will tell you, I don't like Wanda size. I don't think the release is good. I think it's been reformulated so many times that the adhesive, you usually have to put two coats on to get any value of your release. I'd rather use my foil size, even if it costs more, because it takes me less application time. And as we all know in this business, time counts, time is money. All right, so look at that. Oh yeah, that released really nicely. And yeah, I got some spots in there, so I'm not that worried. I'm gonna go back in. See, I got so I got so many of the roses showing that 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 I can go back in and fill with other stuff. It's not a problem. It doesn't show. Let's get in the corner here. Yep, now I'm gonna go on the table for sure. Let's get in these corners. Right, how's that going? Oh, that's really nice. That's really nice. But if you think I'm kidding about this, I've already foiled these, and I can still stick my adhesive, my foil to the surface because there's still parts that have no release. You know, because it's hand painted, it's got a little groove, so sometimes there's uh, a little texture that doesn't get all 100% release in foil, and that happens on legs, and yeah, that happened on mine. So I can still stick, I can still stick this foil to the legs if I wanted to. It won't really release anything because it's pretty well covered with foil, but there's still some sticky spots. Okay, I'm trying to my. For some reason, uh, swipe left. Okay. Okay, you use one to size all the time, Gina. Yeah, that's okay. If you like it, if it works for you, that's good. But I have never liked it. It is not my, my go-to product. I like something that's got more release. I find that every time I've used one to size, I've had to fight with it. Whereas this time, the adhesive on this is so good, I'm actually fighting <laughs> to get the foil on the surface because it's sticking in other places. Right, I'm getting in with my fingers into corners so that I don't have a missed surface. Um, I have a little splotch right there. I'm gonna go in with my finger. There we go, it's all filled in. And I got some empty spots in here. Yep, it's filling in. I always check to see if that spot is tacky because sometimes if I've missed a spot, it's because I've actually missed with the adhesive, which again, easy to correct because um, foils are fairly forgiving. But, uh, let's see. I think I did all right there. That, 
I'm having to wrap my head under the table to see where I've missed. Let's see. And there we go. I got one spot here that I put the foil adhesive on a little thin. Let's see if I can get a little bit more onto it. brush. I even have a toothbrush uh, for foiling in here in some of these really tiny crevices. Um, it's very, very helpful. So you have brushes of all sizes to help facilitate release. And I think I'm all right. So I just need a little more because I've got to get the edges. And let me look up while I'm doing this and answer questions. Let's see. Um, Gina, I'm, I'm reading your comments. Yes, the reason your foils aren't releasing is because one to sizes adhesive levels aren't good enough. I, I will stand by that. Um, when we first doing, started doing foils, foils were originally designed to be heat released, which is why things like our fabric foil size, our fabric foil size, our fabric foil adhesive um, is an iron on. It reacts with the heat and it bonds to the film on the back. But as finishers for furniture and stuff, you can't really iron a wall. So that was done to, I'm, by the way, I'm foiling the edges while I'm talking to you. Um, we had to work to find an adhesive that would stay, be sticky enough to release, you know, the, the pattern from the film. Um, one to size was one of the first ones everybody started using. And I got to tell you, I foiled some stuff in my bathroom when I first started using foils. And it, I nearly made myself insane because I thought it was me not being able to get the foil to a re release and it was the adhesive wasn't working right. Yes, foils can be tough, but if you've got a good adhesive, it makes it a piece of cake, like I'm having no problems with here today. Um, so the two foil sizes that I like best, my personal favorites, and they're, the reason I have two is very specific. Um, my go-to is the Artsyville foil, adhe uh, foil adhesive that I carry here at the studio. And the other one is a Faux FX designer foil size. Now the only reason, the difference between the two is substantial. Um, Faux FX designer foil size is the only water-based size on the market that I know of that um, dries and doesn't need to be top coated. But it also, because it dries, you have a limited window to use it. So it means that you have to use it within a few hours of applying it. So you never apply more foil adhesive than you intend to be able to complete that day when it comes to designer foil size. Artsyville foil size, foil adhesive, it stays sticky forever. So you can roll this on and come back two weeks later which is actually what I did today with the table legs. Ooh, I've got my leg right in the middle of the camera. That was rude of me. Um, so it depends on what we need, but for 90% of the work, especially with furniture, since I know I'm gonna be top coating anyway, this is my, my go-to and I love it. I mean, the release is so good, so very good. All right, we are now having foiled the table shelf as well. I am loving this. I gotta take it down so it doesn't look like I'm looking at you through bars. Not, not this time anyway. I'm gonna swing the camera around. We are gonna work on one other piece because I've got another cool foil to use and I want you to see how it looks on bigger pieces and see where I'm going with it. So give me a sec. Um, let's turn this around. Okay, over here you can see a big blackboard and Actually, what it is, is the lid to a seat bench that um, 
Jody Mullaney picked up for me. And I just gotta grab the foil because I threw it in the bench. So right here is the big black piece of wood. I'm gonna see if I can angle this so you can see back far enough to see the bench. All right, see that? That's the bench right there. And it looks a little like a tiny church pew. Hey, Kate, thanks for tuning in from Italy. Wow, I'm feeling so popular. I'm reading everybody's comments so I can see what you got. You got rules, rolls of ruby foil and they don't adhere with one to size. It's, yeah, I would try a different foil adhesive. It, those ruby foils, some of these foils, because they're designed to be used for heat, can be a challenge. Um, I know you're not looking in my face, but I can't angle up in camera and all that stuff at the same time. I just gotta grab my scissors. This is what happens when you're working on overdrive. All right, let's angle that so you can see the board. Let's see if you can see that. There you go. All right, so I'm working here. I'm now officially so far away, I can't see what anybody's saying. So I will sit down, scroll back through comments shortly. This is my Cosmo Brown foil, and it's got gold and a little bit of copper color in it and bronze, and I thought this would just be really sharp on that bench, and then maybe the other areas I'll do another color of foil. So I'm gonna throw this down here, try to get it smooth. And because it's such a modeled pattern, it's gonna be very forgiving on a big surface. So let me buff it with my fingers here for a minute. Okay, let me get the scrub brush. And now the release on this should be really lovely. And I did it specifically on black because I knew I was putting a dark color over it. And I've also got it only on one can of paint. Normally I have two, so let me grab a second one. Which one, what kind of size do I have better? This way, they don't rock when I... Well, not too much anyway. <laughs> yeah, I'm lying. To, I'm a little delusional today, I guess, too. So, I'm pulling that back. Oh, gosh, yeah. Look how beautiful that came out. Oh, so I'm gonna do the rest of this while I'm here with you. Why? Because I gotta get it done. You can't sit around all night. Let's wear my scissors. Oh gosh, that came out so perfect. And because it's such a forgiving pattern, I can easily um, patch it together and not have any seams showing. releases no seam on it I will finish doing this and then I'll bring the camera over so you can see it a little better just because I can't get it any closer at the moment it's on a stand that if I pull on it it'll fall right off scrub brush, which is there. This is my biggest problem in the studio, is I'm so busy thinking about what my next step is that when I put my tools down, I forget where I put them. I lose the same things every day. I mean, I should have them like just strapped around my neck most days. Scissors, my keys, in the studio only. I don't lose my keys in the house that much. I'm only leaving the same house and somebody else has been taking them. Okay, get a little more up here. Oh, 
the release on this is so good. And the whole base of that bench that I just showed you is going to be done like this. Get a little more. I think in the corner this needs a little more. There. Oh, oh and the front came out almost perfectly. I just got a little spot right here. Okay, this is a near flawless release. Look at that. Oh, yes. Just look how pretty that is. Oh, my God. That's just a thrill for me. Okay, so let me turn around. I will scroll back through the comments and uh, we'll move forward. Uh, let's see. Okay. Thank you, everybody. All right. Oh, yay. Gosh, there's notes and stuff all over the camera, so I got to scroll up. Um, is that the orange tie-dye and orange and pink tie-dye on the legs? Yes, it is. It absolutely is. Do I guard the foil? Um, I don't need to aqua guard on most foils. They, they hold up just fine. Um, quite frankly, I've actually poured epoxy right over foils with no barrier layer. It doesn't have any effect on it. Um, I use um, our uh, art resin on it. It's not hot. It doesn't dissolve the foils, doesn't lift them, no problem. It seals it up great. As a matter of fact, that's what I'm going to do with the top of that table finally. So it's usable and level because it's going to... I don't know whether I'm going to sell it or I'm going to keep it in my guest room now because I need... I need them for both things, but today is a lot of projects. Hi, Debbie. Nice to see you. All right, let me scroll up and make sure I think anything else. Uh, Jody, I missed something you said. Oh, Lord. What did I miss that Jody said? I can't miss something Jody said. It's usually funny. I don't see it. I'm scrolling back. I got to scroll forwards. Okay, it's Artsyville Foil Adhesive for those who are asking. Um, I carry it in 10 ounce, 10 ounce jars, um, quarts, and gallons. I can get that to you all in those sizes. Yeah, with one to size, you have to use an iron because one to size is not just the adhesive isn't strong enough. You don't get a good release. Um, it's not my favorite. That's why I'm telling everybody Artsyvo foil adhesive. It's amazing. You just roll it on, let it sit up until it's clear and doesn't feel gummy, which is anywhere between, depending on how thick you've applied it, 15 minutes, an hour, and it's good to go. Uh, what is that foil called? That is the Cosmo Brown. Um, it's supposed to look like the Flowers Cosmos with a little brown, that's in brown and gold and bronze. It's gorgeous. Oh, you could be getting more, <laughs> I could be getting more goodies from you today, Jody, but we're both useless with our backs, oh gosh. Yeah, I know. It's it's a. I took I had to definitely take a couple extra pain pills before uh, coming online here today. A lot of Advil today. <laughs> All right, let's see. Um, the gang is back. Oh my gosh, you guys are so cute. Anthony, nice to see you, and thank you, Rima. Oh my gosh, that is it has been. You've seen a lot of foiling today. A lot of different application methods, lots of different ways to, uh, different surfaces to use. I, I think foils are one of the most versatile decorative finishing um, materials that you can get for um, furniture. They're very forgiving. Once you top coated them, they, the shine does not dull unless you put a dull top coat on them. Um, they're super easy to use. They make everything look way more expensive. Um, and very fresh looking. I love it. I love it. I love it. Felicia, nice to see you here. So, um, I've been on for, oh, I don't know, a little over an hour now. Been babbling. And truly, I am, I apologize for the, the stutter and the babble today. Um, I, any of you who've moved recently knows that there's just so much stuff uh, that goes into a move. And... I'm a little, I, I, I have no fear, no problems admitting I'm a little overwhelmed with it. 
fortunately, I have good people helping me out. And uh, we move on Monday, so it's almost all done. The unpacking doesn't freak me out. It's all the packing, not forgetting things. That's what gets me going. Um, same, same fears when I moved into this space. So I know you're getting my head cut off. It has to do with my camera grabbing weirdly. Um, we're good. Um, we are going to continue the rest of the foiling today on the other benches. And I am going to go home to my new house and hang hooks in the bathroom so people have places to hang their towels because there's not enough room in the bathroom for a good big towel rack. But I'm excited. It's all good. Everything's great here. So one more time, now that I know we can use the S word again, share, 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 share. Um, share to groups, share to pages, share to any place that's not going to get you in trouble for sharing. And uh, we have had a great day with the foils. I'm going to go back and foil the last part of that bench around the base today so that it doesn't stay sticky when I'm not here tomorrow. Um, if you see, oh, this is this is one other thing I want to share. If you see that uh, I've posted that I've closed early for any specific reason, that does not affect online ordering. It just means I've had to close the studio space to be somewhere else. So if you see I'm closed, don't let it affect it. We'll still be here. We'll still get your order out the next business day. No problem. Don't hesitate to order. Please check out my website, paintedstudio.com. All the products that you saw me working with today are all available there. I'd love to ship them out and send it to you. I love growing my group of foil, fi foil fanatics. And it was a fun with foils Friday for me. I hope it was the same with you. Thank you, everybody. Have a great weekend. Bye.